Today we're going to be doing the murder of Lucy McHugh, 13 year old schoolgirl. She was murdered here at Southampton Sports Centre on the 25th of July 2018. Now her body was actually found at quarter to eight the next day on the 26th of July 2018. Lucy was a schoolgirl that attended Redbridge Community School and it shocked the area when this happened. She was murdered by Stephen Nicholson, who I'm not going to do anything about in this video. I've got another video of, uh, of him, um, where I'll go a little bit more in depth. I just wanted to keep this one short, but about Lucy and her final route that she took to get here where she met uh, she met her end way too early so i hope you enjoy the video and i'll see you at the beginning so this is a starting point for lucy i decided not to go right from her house um just out of respect really because I, I don't know if her parents still live there or not but just down the road there she lived down there on the left and she would have walked up this road here and she would have come all the way along here and she would have gone left at the roundabout just down there I don't know if you can see that I'll zoom in a little bit she would have gone left up there and that's where she gets her first bit of CCTV footage from there so I will see you there. So Lucy was seen walking past this shop from their CCTV from inside the shop at about two minutes past nine. And then she proceeded to go up the road that way. And I should take you. Unfortunately, I couldn't stop at the hospital um, where the CCTV footage was shot from because there's road works and roads closed and things like that. Um, so I'll show you the CCTV footage for that. Um, from there, she came up to this place here. She walked past there. The camera's just up on the, on the house there. And then she walked past this gate and there's a CCTV footage for that. And then she walked from there all the way up that road there. And as you can see yet again, there's actually road works and the road's shut up that end for going that way. So I'll have to drive all the way around um, and I will see you on the other side. This is unfortunately the last bit of CCTV that Lucy was seen on and the last time she was ever seen. So we're outside the Tesco's now um, on the CCTV footage you can see that she's just walking past the Tesco's it was at 9.28 she walked past this Tesco's and I'll see you at the next location this is the most likely place that Lucy came in either through that gate there through this gate here but what she would have done is walked up this way here so I'm going to do the walk now but then uh, we fast forward it so you don't have to do the whole walk yourself and apparently <coughs> Lucy told Nicholson that she was pregnant so that's the belief that he lured her here. He said she was going to tell her mum. So he lured her here and took her life. So she wouldn't tell her mum. But he got found out. And now not only is he a paedophile, he's also a murderer. So it didn't work out after all. And Lucy lost her life way too early 
for nothing. So just up here is where Lucy's body was found by the dog walker. We'll uh, try and get there as quick as I can. She would have walked through here. I'm just up on this tree here. Still got some uh, ribbons and stuff that was put there. And Lucy would have come down here. I'm not sh we're not sure if she's on her own or with Nicholson. But I do have it on authority. I don't know how good that authority is. It's around here to the left on the plateau, on a plateau. Up here. And this is where Lucy would have spent her final moments. Such a waste of life. Just because someone wanted to cover up that he was a paedophile. What an awful way to lose your life. This one's about Stephen Nicholson, the paedophile and murderer. That's him right there. I'll show you the journey he took in here, all on CCTV, the footage and locations. Now let's get on with it. This is the place where Lucy McHugh was murdered by Stephen Nicholson. Our starting point today will be where they entered the park, which is just beyond those trees in the middle of your screen now. So on the morning of the 25th of July 2018, Lucy entered this park at either this gate over there or this gate over here, which is the same place Stephen Nicholson would have also came in half an hour before she turned up. You can see the route Lucy took on uh, my previous video, um, which I'll put at the end of this video. But Nicholson, when he came in, he was riding his bike, and this is the route that he took. Um, we've got CCTV footage to show when he came into the park, and I'll show you that when we get there. You know, any sudden death is a tragedy, but the violent death of a child is it, just heartbreaking. But as a girl on the brink of her teens, Lucy was also vulnerable and easy prey for someone like Nicholson with an interest in only satisfying his own needs. And no regard whatsoever for Lucy, who seemed to him to be sexually available. Nicholson was just 24 on July 2018. Lucy's mother and her stepdad allowed him to stay in their house. He had lodged there since May 2017. It seems Lucy had developed a crush on Nicholson shortly after he had moved in. She was only 12. Instead of keeping his distance or even moving out, he encouraged her. She was available in the house, in the bedroom opposite his, and he took full advantage of her. Notes written by Lucy found after she died tell the full story of their relationship. The notes give details of the loss of her virginity to Nicholson in May 2017, 
the repeated sex between them which followed and the emotions which Lucy experienced throughout. She was only 12 years old at the time. Lucy tells Nicholson, quote, whatever this is between us has to end. Well, it clearly didn't, did it? In 2018, Lucy started getting a bit concerned about their relationship. Um, it, she told friends it started to get a bit violent. He even shouted at her in her face, calling her a C-U-N-T. That weekend, after hearing Lucy and Nicholson have an argument, Lucy's parents asked Nicholson to leave, which he did straight away, leaving all his stuff in his room. On Tuesday, the 24th of July, Nicholson left work in the afternoon and called in sick, saying he had sickness and diarrhoea. In saying this, he knew he wouldn't be allowed to return to work within 48 hours. At some point, Lucy had told Nicholson that she was pregnant and he was the father. This was found out later not to be true, just a way of uh, getting at Nicholson, I suppose. This is why Nicholson hatched a plan to silence her. On the 24th, in the afternoon, he cycled up to a flat of an elderly man whom he knew who lived in Kersden Court, right outside the sports centre. The fellow whose flat this was had nothing to do with the um, planning or the murder of Lucy. He knew nothing about it. Nicholson was just using his flat because it was convenient. He spent three hours in that flat, no doubt planning to get Lucy out of his life for good. He ordered some clothes off Amazon and some trainers to be delivered the very next day on the 25th. On the night of the 24th, him and Lucy had spoken over Messenger um, and he had persuaded her to meet him at the sports centre the next morning. And on the 25th of July, Lucy left her home just before nine o'clock to go and meet Nicholson up at the sports centre. Now from here, Nicholson goes off just to the left there. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. Now, while Lucy was on her way to the sports centre, Nicholson went back to the flat at Kersden Court got changed into his new clothes and deliberately went to the Tesco's so he could be seen on the Tesco CCTV in the clothes that he was wearing. And from that Tesco's, he went back to the flat, got changed into the clothes he was gonna murder Lucy in and then went back to the park. And for some reason, he thought his clothes change would be enough to cover his tracks. And he couldn't be the guy in the park riding the bike because they had different clothes on. You can see him keep looking up at the cameras, thinking he's got the perfect plan all sorted out. At this point, it's worth noting the time that he leaves this store. It's 9.02 a.m. and 46 seconds. And at that exact same time, it just so happens, Lucy was walking past the Premier Convenience Store. it takes her 26 minutes to walk from this store here up to the Tesco's Express where we just saw Nicholson. And here she is walking past that Tesco's Express Nicholson was at 26 minutes before. Time now is 9.28 and the last time Lucy was ever captured on any CCTV camera. So this is the bit where Nicholson went off to the left early on about a minute ago when I told you. Where the arrow's pointing at, that's where we were. Now at the top of your screen there, in the blue circle, that's Nicholson coming along that grass path on his bike in his murder clothes. He must have known about the CCTV cameras, which is why he obviously changed his clothes. And this is what the route looks like now, where he came along there, look. There's the lamppost where we first saw him from. Quick cut across the grass and down the pavement. At the bottom of that pavement, it brought him to this part here. You can see on the footage of him riding up and down. Most probably looking to see who was about, is it safe to do? He must have thought he'd covered every single angle. He's just watching there, look, riding up and down, literally scoping the place out, waiting for Lucy to turn up. 
is over by a little boating lake there. We go over and have a look at that boating lake and um, which he went around where he was planning what he was going to do, how he was going to do it. I think he's confident now that he was going to do it. So we're on the other side of that fence now, looking in the same direction, just in front there is a boating lake. That's where he was widening up and down in between those two trees. He rode all the way around this lake and then came back and it's just at that point where he goes off to see uh, or goes off to meet Lucy. Right, while we're just on the way over to the other side of the lake there, we'll just take this time to ask you if you're enjoying the video so far, subscribe, like and comment. That would help the channel immensely. And if you do that for me, what I'll do for you is another video. It's a win-win, you know it makes sense. Now when we eventually get on the other side of here, I'll, when I pan round you'll see pretty much the whole route that Nicholson took while he was in here. Now again, our starting point is there. Nicholson rode along this little ridge here, down the path. He then came around in between these two trees here, rode up and down. Now just incidentally, while we're at this point, right about there, that's the entrance of a path that goes into the woods where Lucy's body was found the next day. So from here, Nicholson, after finishing his ride around, he went along this little path that goes along here and out and straight on the CCTV, you can see where he went, look. He rode along there. Now this is worth noting the time again, it's 9.39. This is 10 minutes after Lucy walked past the Tesco's Express. It takes five minutes from Tesco's Express to get to the park. So Lucy must have been in the park for at least five minutes already. Nicholson rode down that way to take the same route up to where he murdered Lucy. I can only imagine they've been there before and this is where he planned to meet her. And this is the route that Lucy took right up to where the entrance is where she was murdered that Nicholson then followed after she had been there five minutes later and then met her in the woods. Lucy's body was found here the very next morning. You can see the video that I did of Lucy and her murder site on the video that I'll show you at the end of this video. But from here on, Lucy is now dead, murdered by Stephen Nicholson stabbed 27 times about the chest, neck and face with defensive marks on her arms trying to save herself. She died by blood loss from a carotid artery being severed. It's not known if Nicholson stayed until she died or left while she was still dying. He left the park and went back to the flat at Kersden Court, got changed out of the clothes he just murdered Lucy in back into the clothes that we saw him in in that Tesco's Express. And then he left and took the same route back home, going past that same Tesco's Express. And this is where the CCTV picks up from. And notice the time, it's four minutes past 11. We can only estimate by the times that we've got from the footage that Lucy must have died somewhere between 10 to 10 and 10 to 11 somewhere within that hour we're now watching Nicholson on his way home actually taking the same route that Lucy took to get to the park an hour and a half beforehand on his way home someone from the police analysis that were checking on phone pings discovered that there was a slight deviation on his route home his most direct route home coupled with the last few bits of CCTV. So they went back and they had a look at that deviation and that is where they found the clothes that he wore to kill Lucy that he had dumped. And these items had Lucy's blood on and Nicholson's DNA. This investigation is a good example of old versus new, I would suggest. So you have the good old fashioned detective work that is knocking on doors, house to house inquiries, speaking to eyewitnesses 
and then you layer that with some of the technical, technological evidence that we get nowadays. So that could be through phone data and CCTV and slowly when you start laying that on top of each other it starts to build a really strong compelling picture as to what someone's movements are. And so when we had the phone data in relation to Nicholson's movements from the time he left the area of the sports centre back to his mother's we could see that it wasn't taking the direct route that you, one would expect him to take and that there was a slight deviation. And so we explored that further and then made the decision to then search that area and that's when we had that crucial find of the, um, the murder kit, I would suggest. When it was discovered that Lucy was missing and hadn't come home, Lucy's stepdad contacted Nicholson who consoled him and said, I'm sure she'll be home soon, don't worry, you know what she's like, knowing that she would not return home that night or any other night. So here's the face once more of a devious, manipulating, paedophile and murderer who got a sentence of a minimum of 33 years before any chance of parole. His name once more, Stephen Nicholson. We are at Hollybrook Cemetery to pay our respects to Lucy McHugh. Lucy was born on the 24th of October 2004. Lucy's family describe her as a little hurricane full of smiles and lip gloss, wearing the brightest colours with no care on what anyone thought. She was a real individual and never followed the crowd. On the 25th of July 2018, Lucy McHugh was brutally murdered. She was only 13 years old. Her body was found in Woodland at Southampton Sports Centre by a dog walker early the next morning on the 26th of July. Uh, you can see the site and more details on this on another video that I did on my crime files about Lucy McHugh's last walk. The link will be at the end of this video. After the discovery of Lucy's body, Soon police had someone on their radar. This was Stephen Nicholson. It's being said, why would her parents have Nicholson living in their house? Well, Nicholson was a friend of Lucy's stepdad and needed somewhere to live as he'd fallen out with his mother. So they let him have the spare room where he lodged. That's something that a friend would do, wouldn't it? Help out another friend. They had no idea of his dark side, that he was a paedophile. That's something that, yeah, Pedophiles would most probably keep to themselves, not make public. Lucy's mum got him a job at a care home and he passed their checks also. Once he moved in, he soon started grooming Lucy, who eventually grew a crush on him. After a while, Lucy told her cousin he was violent to her and she was scared of him. At Lucy's home, Lucy and Nicholson were often arguing. He used to call her a little 13-year-old child. At times, he was angry at Lucy, shouting in her face. Though so young, Lucy seemed to have stood up to him, telling him on the Sunday before she died that it was his fault and that she had a hold over him. That weekend, her parents, fed up with the argument and with a new baby in the house, had asked Nicholson to leave. That same night, Lucy told her stepdad that she wanted to tell her mother and him something, but her mother came home late after Lucy was asleep and the moment passed. They did the right thing by Lucy by asking Nicholson to leave, but it was too late. Lucy was already in a sexual relationship with Nicholson that started when she was just 12 years old in 2017. Lucy and Nicholson had fallen out. Lucy said to Nicholson she was going to tell her mum about their relationship. It's at this point Nicholson decided to silence her. There's a reason why I didn't put Lucy's grave on um, my other videos at the end is because I had trouble finding it and I'll show you why when I get there. So let's just take a trip over to her grave and I'll show you the reason why. Um, I believe it's over that way and uh, I think I found it. It's over there. But uh, we walk all the way around. Lucy was laid to rest on the uh, 27th of August 2018, which is one month and one day after she was murdered by Stephen Nicholson. It's really 
really sad that he had to do what he did for his own self gain. There we go. Looks like she's visited quite a lot because the grass is quite depressed here. And there it is. That's where she ended up. Sad story. Taken too soon. And here's why. But uh, it's Lucy Page. Dolly. I'm guessing that's her nickname. Here lies our magical daughter, a precious sister, granddaughter, niece and cousin. So unique and very, very much loved. Our buddy brave angel, you were taken far too soon from this earth. Now to watch over us in spirit, just like you did in life. Gone forever, but never be forgotten. No goodbyes, just see you soon. Our hurricane of smiles and lip gloss. <laughs> That's nice. It's well kept. She's got a well kept grave and so she should have. Such a shame that she was taken so early. And Lucy, may you rest in peace and we we'll try and keep your memory alive. Um, and really that's all that's left to be said is um, I bid you farewell.